Thank you. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call up Porter Williams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise with enormous pleasure on the third reading of this bill, um, a bill that uh, um, has been um, well traversed, I, I hope, and robustly discussed, I hope, despite the truncated process, because at the end of the day, this is to give effect to the settlement that the unions have fought for long and hard. And in that regard, while there has been some discussion about the potential for back pay being lost and, and other conditions, actually what this will do will put money in the pockets of women and other workers in the aged care um, service. And that's the important thing to acknowledge. This puts into effect the settlement that the unions have negotiated on behalf of their members. And I'm enormously proud to have been part, a very small part of this process. And it was a really interesting process. It was a truncated um, uh, process. However, at, at Select Committee, I believe we actually had really robust discussions. I hope we had sufficient time to consider all of the implications of this particular legislation. We were certainly given a few nights uh, in which to filter through and think about um, the implications of this. We may get some things wrong. There may be some things that we have missed out, but I know that we have um, thought about this and thought about all the aspects of this particular legislation, and I hope that we've done our best to get it right. There are a couple of things I do want to um, I do want to point out because this will impact 55,000 workers. It's an enormous, enormous settlement and enormously important. Um, there has been much talked about the extinguishing of rights and what has had to be foregone in order to ensure that uh, these workers actually get the pay that they deserve. Um, and I won't, um, I won't spend too much time on that. But it has been about negotiation and it has been about putting the interests of those workers to the forefront to ensure that their pay rates were moved to a, a, a rate that actually showed how much we value them as workers. There were employers who, um, and providers who came to the Select Committee who talked about the impact, the cost impact on, on their businesses but every single one of them actually knew the value of the, the workers that they were that were in their employ, and um, uh, made the point that, that despite the fact uh, in the legislation we say um, we are working towards uh, the, the contributing towards uh, the cost to employers, um, I believe that uh, the SOP that Jan Logie has uh, has tab had tabled and unfortunately didn't pass actually highlighted a point that there are some um, employers out there who will not, who will do what they can not to honour the terms of this agreement. And that it is a useful point for us to actually try and underline uh, where we can the opportunity to encourage those employers to um, live up to the expectations of um, acting in good faith. So thank you, Jan, for for attempting to do that. I know that that is now on record. So anyone reviewing this legislation will know what was intended by, um, by that SOP. There was a lot of discussion around relativity, that the people um, who will be benefit from this legislation may in fact be paid more than their supervisors or other people in the workplace, such as uh, junior nurses. That is a matter for the employers to actually uh, deal with and address if they don't want to lose their staff. Um, uh, staff who may move into care and support work because it advantages them in their pay packet. And that is something that it, it will be a, an issue. It is a pressure on the sector and it's something that I, I hope um, that uh, this government will work its way towards supporting so that we can continue to have really um, sound support for our, uh, particularly our vulnerable older people. Um, the aspect uh, of training and the support for training to get uh, our staff qualified to level four is um, extraordinary and um, one that we really support and one that I hope that the workers take up in huge numbers because it is to their benefit. 
Um, Mr Speaker, I um, just want to uh, talk about one or two other things um, before I hand over to others to, to make some final comments in this third reading. The first really is about the idea of pay equity. Um, from the outset, uh, there have been lots of discussions about what pay equity is about, and we know that this is a settlement agreement. This is not necessarily about pay equity, but I don't want the principles of pay equity to be lost. The principles about pay equity is to ensure that in industries where the work is done largely by women, that we are paid the same rate um, as we would be if we were working in industries where, the, where we could have a comparator um, uh, for men. And we haven't done that in this case. And that is a discussion that we've lost the opportunity in this case, but it's a discussion that we must continue to have. Because in order to address some of the social harms in our community, particularly that of poverty of our children, we must continue the fight around pay equity. And I hope it's not lost. Um, uh, Mr Speaker, the, in my first reading speech I, um, I talked about a, a support worker that I knew in, in the industry who showed um, for me what this is all about. And what she did coming into work one day in a, um, a dementia unit, or in a, a, in a dementia unit, one of her clients immediately um, came towards her. The, the support worker hadn't even had a chance to sit down and have a cup of tea. And this support worker grabbed the woman by her hands and held her hands in hers and talked to her for a few minutes. And it was a really lovely exchange. And it spoke to me about the care that, the, that our support workers have for people who aren't even their family members. And thank goodness that they do, because all of us may, at some point in our life, be in the situation where we are cared by, uh, by people who aren't our family members. And don't we want those people to be just like that, that support, support worker that I knew? Um, Mr Speaker, the, the thing that we cannot um, uh, thank enough, that those care and support workers, is the amount of love that they give to people every single day. They are worth twice, three times, a hundred times what we are paying, to, paying them. Um, but today we are uh, going to celebrate and acknowledge them. They, they are finally going to have a little bit of what they deserve. And um, we do not want to hold up the passage of this bill on the 1st of July. Let's hope that, the, um, that you uh, enjoy what you get in your pay packet because you justly deserve it. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call Simon O'Connor. Speaker, very pleased.